Alright guys, hello! Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering why things look a little bit different today. Uh, well first let me just say that GKB got stuck at work, so I am going to be your awesome host for tonight's episode. So everybody, let's get started. Welcome to the 77th episode of the Console Corner Podcast, where of course we talk all things gaming. Uh, if you're first listening to the show, uh, we do tons of gaming news, and well, let's just be honest, everything gaming, gaming, gaming. Because, well, that's what we are. We're gamers. Uh, <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. We're gamers. And uh, remember, guys, um, we do have our show on uh, all of your great MP3 formats, uh, so you can hear us on... Um, we have uh, iTunes, Google Play, we have... I know we don't have Spotify yet. We were trying to get Spotify. But one day it would happen <laughs> I, I don't know what was going on with that but uh, anyways you can uh, find all those links below guys so that you guys can hear if you guys end up watching it after the show and if you're watching uh, the show on any of those make sure you guys check back to the YouTube channel and you know show your support hit that like button and all that fun stuff so uh, let's first introduce uh, our host of the console corner of course like I said I am she wolf but next up we have is lady foxfire Hi everyone, how's it going? Oh, this looks fancy. I like it. Is this like a gaming then takeover? Because I'm down. I'm it just is. saying. It's such a gaming. gaming takeover. <laughs> yeah. It's like the only style I know now. Next up we have is Mr. Noof Nukem. Hey people, what's going on? It's gonna be another great show. However, unfortunately, it looks like we're missing the governor, but uh he's with us in body, mind, and spirit, all that good stuff. I'm sure he's not too far away, but uh She Wolf can all explain that stuff. But yeah, it's gonna be a good show. Thanks. Should be interesting. I'm sure I'll follow my face a couple times, but it's all good. All right, next up we have, of course, and last but not least, Mr. Magic Mike. Hey, what's up, everyone? Even though GKB may not be here, he's still here in spirit, and we've got some awesome topics to talk about tonight. I can't wait to get into them. Of course, of course. Now, as we always do here on the Console Corner, because, hey, it is a Console Corner tradition, and that is, what have we played this week? So, going down the line, which is kind of short, there's only four of us, so... Uh, Aww. Yeah, I know. We're adorable today. I know, I'm so cute. Alright, anyways, uh, going down the line, Noof, what have you been playing this week? Oh boy, uh, a lot of everything. I've been playing Doom, and playing Ratchet and Clank, Forza Horizon 3, Gears of War 4, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, lots of that. So a little bit of everything, actually. Been pretty busy, still trying to get through that backlog, and having a good time doing it. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. What about you, Mike? What have you been playing? Well, compared to Noof, uh, not not too much. I've been playing uh, some Forza Horizon 3. I just I can't put that game down. That has been my game of the summer. And uh, Injustice 2, both of those games, they're, they're what's been keeping me going through the uh, the gaming drought that we've seen the past uh, couple weeks. Very cool. Very cool. And Fox, what have you been playing? Um, wow. A little bit of everything, but um, I'll mention some of the ones that stood out to me, which was Destiny. I played some Iron Banana. Um, so RIP to that, because that's the last time they'll do it. Um, Gears of War 4, of course, with the peeps. Uh, Titanfall 2 with you. Played some of that yesterday. And Battlefield 1 this weekend with some of the guys in the community. So shout out to Phantom 2, my homeboy Carlos and Tim. Um, Battlefield 4 on PlayStation, which is a new thing. I haven't played that before, but I played it with Homegirl on there. And uh, so that was interesting. And then today I played a little bit of The Walking Dead Michonne because I want to finish that game up. Wow. So yeah. Played a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot uh, so, what have I been playing? Uh, I've been playing Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Uh, I've also been playing Titanfall 2. 
Um, I've also... Oh, I've been playing Arrow. That game is actually yeah. really interesting. Very interesting. Um, what are the games awesome I've been music. playing? I was also playing PUBG with GKB not too long ago. Got back into playing that because uh, they gave uh, Xbox controller support on it. So thought that was pretty cool to, you know, GKB was trying it out to uh, to see what cool stuff would be for, like, if you were playing on the you Xbox. You tried it? Yeah. You tried it with a control? How is it? Is it well, better? Well, I is haven't. I weird? Haven't. Well, oh, okay, I, okay. I played it, like, before they added the actual support. Because there was, like, this thing you could do to pl- use a controller, which was really awkward. Especially when you get so used to playing a game on, like, with a mouse and keyboard and just, like, switch to, like, a controller. It just seems weird. I have that issue when we play, like, Diablo 3 and I switch back and forth. It just feels weird. Because they're not yeah, the same weird. controls. It is. It's very weird. <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, I played some Destiny. played Destiny by myself. Played a couple rounds. Oh, you re- don't yeah. don't do that to my heart. Don't do that. I'm going to because it's your fault. No. Anyways. anyways. No. 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 <laughs> it's not. Anyways. Okay. Uh. So yeah, that's about it. Um. So people are wondering where GKB is. Yes. Um. He's stuck with work, so uh, he won't be able to join us. So we will be moving on to the topics now. Uh. One that uh, I actually kind of sort of threw out there was Spotify but what's mm-hmm. interesting about this topic is the far the fact that they're bringing Spotify is now on Xbox one so Woo-hoo. yeah what do you guys think about that go ahead nice you want to yeah oh, you jump in well, Fox sounded pretty excited there I mean me, me myself <laughs> personally I don't I don't use Spotify I know a lot of people that do so because I know that it's a very popular app I think it's great that it's coming to Xbox. It's it's awesome to have more options for for people to you know listen to the media that they they've purchased if they have subscriptions to Spotify. Be able to like listen to your own music playlist when you game. I, I mean that was one of the best things about Forza Horizon Three was the implementation of the the groove music directly into the game itself. And, and I mm. really hope to see more games going that way. Uh, like, like I said, I don't use Spotify, so I'm not too excited with it, but I, I've got my entire music library up on, on my OneDrive, which then links up to, to Groove Music. So I, I think it's absolutely great to be able to listen to your own music when you game, and uh, again, just more options for people is, is always a good thing. That's cool. Um, I'm really excited about it. I think it's awesome. Um, I've always used these kind of apps. Um, like, we've already had Pandora and iHeartRadio, so I love having music in the background while I'm playing or um, even though I have my Google like home now, I still use it here and there because I have it in my headset and I don't want to disturb like anybody in the house. So I still play these apps in the background while I play my games. And now you have more options. And I feel like Spotify in a way is just way better, like the way that it's set up, the, the options that they give you. Um, maybe it would be cool if they added with Forza, but I understand why uh, the Groove Music is with Forza, the whole Microsoft thing. Right, um, right. But I am really, really happy. We finally have more options for different apps, especially that people that like to use different uh, ways to listen to their music. So more options is better. And everybody was so hyped about it today, downloading it, talking about it. Um, By the time I went to go download it myself, I had three, uh, no, two errors because it wouldn't download for some reason. And I was like, is everybody downloading this right now? So eventually I got it to work and I downloaded it. So all good. Looks awesome. Well, having extra options is never a bad thing, but honestly, I could really give a rat's ass about any of these music programs. And the only way I plan on ever subscribing to any of them is if maybe they add it to like a bundle deal, like say with Groove or Spotify for an extra 10 bucks on your membership uh, to Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus. You know, you get access to all that that kind of stuff because honestly... uh, I don't know. I just, I just don't really care for it a whole lot, to be honest with you. Like most of the music nowadays, to me, is just manufactured trash. So uh, oh, wow. half the stuff that's on there is like, <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't, I couldn't care less for. So uh, yeah, I, I, again, that's as much as I can really say on it. I mean, like I said, I'm glad it's there. It's kind of about time, and I guess for some people that love it, it's great. But um, yeah. Oh, wow, you have some strong feelings about that, bro. I didn't know about about that. My thing about Spotify is it is cool to have for people who want that. Like, I personally just use my computer for music. Like, I'll have YouTube playing, but that's because I literally have my Xbox right 
into right. like my whole computer setup. So yeah. I, I can sit here and do both if I really want to listen to music. But I'm the type of gamer that like, de- well, it all like depends on the game I'm playing that I actually want to listen to what's going on. Um, mm. But for Spotify itself, just to have the opportunity to have more apps that people can do that kind of stuff is awesome. And of course, definitely for the people who have their podcasts and stuff on Spotify, um, we in particular, sure. I haven't searched to see if like we were put on it. Um, the company that we uh, we go through for our MP3s and stuff like that that we pay for um, is actually getting us on Spotify. So I don't know if, if Console Corner's on there. I haven't looked in a couple of weeks, so we may be on there and I haven't even noticed. <laughs> but when did they send you an email like you've been approved? No, da, 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 da. no, no, no. It oh, okay. work. Nah, it doesn't work like that. Interesting, yeah. but it is cool uh, to have that if we're on there or any other podcast that people want to listen to through yeah, Spotify. Like, like it goes down to obviously there is a whole bunch of other podcasts and stuff like that, and people can listen to other gaming news and just it, like they said, music or anything. It just gives options, and that's what makes more apps. Like it, to me personally, it's just in general of bringing more apps to the console itself to give the variety and the options of things that other people can do while they're gaming or even Another if they're thing. not gaming and they just want to listen to it true you have it on in the background well you do stuff um but another point that tim brought up in the chat was that he likes spotify and he has spotify because pandora doesn't exist over there anymore so that's also good for different areas regions that don't have the same apps uh when you have access to one that actually works yeah. and yeah. exists over there so no, that's, that's actually that's pretty cool. Point. I, I didn't mm-hmm. know about that. Yeah. That's and um, a lot of the time when I do get Spotify, like I usually have it here and there, but I rarely pay for it. Uh, unless when they have a good deal and they're like, get like two or three months for a dollar or something like that. So most of the time I, I notice that they do have a lot of great deals for Spotify if you want to subscribe uh, and have ad free and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah. That is true. That is true. It is definitely interesting to see, you know, the things that they do and all that. So I'm just, I'm glad there's variety. And again, that's what makes the difference. Well, and like we said before, you know, more options is always good for consumers. So, you know, whether you like Pandora, whether you like Spotify, whether you like Groove, whether you like another service, there's there's something for you on Xbox and that's a great thing. Yeah, I definitely agree. Definitely agree. All right, guys. So... Uh, let's move on to the next topic, which is Microsoft is still working on Sony for cross-play, cross-play with Minecraft. So, in other words, Sony is just being difficult when it comes to cross-play. <laughs> I'm sorry, my biggest issue with this is their whole theory on it's not safe for kids. First off, Microsoft is one of the biggest companies that protects their users. There are so many options to protect your children while having an Xbox account that it mm-hmm. is crazy. Now, our PlayStation, on the other hand, there is not as many options. There really isn't. And for the fact of how many we know their accounts have been hacked and all that other stuff that you hear a lot for Sony, I don't see how yeah. they're safer than Microsoft. And to come out and say, hey, we're trying to protect our kids, well, are you really? Well, and, and for me, the whole, like, Sony is trying to protect their consumer base and, you know, they, they can't control what's happening when you're interacting with other consoles. Like, that argument was completely thrown out of the window when Nintendo was on board because Nintendo is probably the most family-friendly friendly, uh, gaming manufacturer that I can mm-hmm. think of. Exactly. exactly. Like, that, I have to say, like, that's one of the biggest things is Nintendo is one of, like, the hardest companies to actually get them to interact with the other consoles. Like, even with their games and everything else like that, Nintendo tends to be the one that keeps to themselves, but they didn't. They were okay with this crossplay. And honestly, crossplay has nothing to do, at least personally to me, with other people's ac- accounts. No matter, like, whether you're a child or whether you're an adult, you're still going to play with people around the world, whether you're playing on one console or whether you're playing on crossplay. It makes no difference. Right. Yeah. And what are they trying to protect their users from? Are they trying to protect them from, like, you know, uh, people who are just trolls and chat and stuff like that? Like, I, I mean, I don't I don't have a PS4, but when I have gone over to, to friends' places and played an online game on PS4, you know, the, the things that you hear, the things that, that rude people will say are the same no matter what console you're on. So whether you're dealing with, you, you know, somebody saying 
racist or sexist things on on Xbox or whether it's on PlayStation or whether it's on PC. Mm -hmm. You know, those, those type of people exist everywhere. So what exactly is it that Sony is protecting their users from? Exactly. Oh my god, so true. And especially Chris, when like my ass again. <laughs> what? What? Uh, what was that? <laughs> Kratos just kicked my ass again. Ugh. Oh, okay. Isn't it just kind of funny though for the fact that Nintendo? All right, they announced that Rocket League, which is another huge title, is becoming crossplay, but not only just with Xbox One, but also with Steam. So it's literally yeah. everything but Sony. Is going to have this player fan base from crossplay. And the uh, yeah. the Rocket League devs, they've they've said that they go to Sony like almost on a weekly basis, saying like, "Hey, we've got the code. Can you let us do crossplay?" And they say <laughs> no. And then next week, "Hey, we've got the code. Can yeah. we do crossplay?" No. How about, now? No. How about I mean, now? I I don't know how true that is, but I remember a couple weeks ago the the Rocket League dev uh, like the, their Twitter account said like we ask them every week, and it's always no. Um, it just really makes you reevaluate that whole like uh, the slogan they've got that they're for the players because you know if if you're a player in an online game, what what is it that kills online games? It's the player base declining, and if you can allow that player base to to exist across multiple hardware, uh, then that that the longevity of that online game is going to last that much longer. So I, I just I don't know how this is how is this for the players? That's what that's what I want Sony to. Bottom explain. line, Sony's really afraid that somebody will not go up and buy a PlayStation because they can just keep their Xbox to play some of the games that they love the best. That that's that's exactly thing. what it is. Uh, and the other side of the coin might be the fact that Sony security tends to suck. I mean, maybe they're afraid they're going to get hacked to get more people cross play. Who the <laughs> hell knows? But. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not buying their BS. I mean, get with the times. If Nintendo's willing to do it, it really makes you look bad. Um, you know what I mean? I mean, mind you, if with Switch anyway, nobody's going to chat on that thing unless you want to hang yourself from the ceiling with all the cords. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so they're not too worried about it. But, yeah, get with the times, man. It, it would almost be better for Sony to just, you know, be honest and say, like, we don't want to allow crossplay because that's a reason for somebody not to to buy our hardware than it is for them to use this excuse so that they're trying to protect their player base. <laughs> yeah. It's just... The whole thing is actually oh. the whole thing is actually just really sad and, and like obviously true. Everything you guys are saying is true. But it's sad the fact that Microsoft is like, hey, we're we're waiting because we're willing to work with them on Minecraft, which is their own game. And then you have Nintendo which is working with them. And then you have PC who is like everybody's in on it and I mean, you would expect Sony to come around eventually, but I wouldn't be surprised if they ever don't. Also, not just not just PC and Nintendo, but also mobile when it comes to Minecraft. Like, you could be playing with somebody on an iPad. You could be playing somebody oh, with right. an Android tablet on their cell phone. Yeah, you know, I it's. About that. I mean, there's just a whole like all these players. You know, no matter where you're at, if if my son's playing a game and I want to boot up the the Minecraft Pocket Edition, I could I could help him build something. You know, uh, that's yeah, that's, that's awesome. great. That, that's awesome to to do something like that on your lunch break while your kids at home on summer vacation. Well, Jim, you know, Jim Ryan did come out and say, you know, we've done it in the past. We're always open to conversations with any developers or publishers who want to talk about something like this. But then, you know, he goes into saying how, unfortunately, it's a commercial decision between themselves and their stakeholders. But of course, he can't go into details. So that's all he can say like i don't know if that's really enough to stand on that baseline to say hey you 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 know we're not doing it it just yeah. it makes no sense it doesn't make that's no just pointing the sense. finger at someone else yes. like hey we can't do it because of uh, some other guy like what? <laughs> there's a there's a board of executives <laughs> in a dark room at the top floor of whatever building sony hasn't sold off yet that's saying no we don't want to do this <laughs> oh, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a little them harsh. Suits, them suits, though. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't... Even if this was Xbox, like, if it was the... Like, if the shoe was on the other foot, I, I would literally still have the same issues. Because, again, like Mike said, games that are multiplayer stand alone only on their player base. If their player base moves on to other games, as we all seen with previous games, because new games are constantly coming out, better games are always coming out. And mm -hmm. if they don't keep a large fan base going, the games then demolish and they just become irrelevant. But when you open them up to such a big audience, 
that keeps people intrigued. That keeps people playing because there is so many other people out there in the world that are actually able to play this game where one game that is stuck on one platform, whether it's PC, Sony, or Xbox, no matter where it is, if they're only stuck to that fan base, as soon as a new and better game comes out, it's no longer relevant. Cough, cough. Gears of War on PC. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, at the end of the day, man, crossplay means extending the player base. Bottom line, it expands the player base, and it also, you know, uh, the lighter side of things, it becomes like a sort of a, a bit of a bragging right, you know, to like, hey, like players on PlayStation are better than Xbox, vice versa. You know what I mean? You can kind of do that a little bit too. Uh, just you know, um, great for the old uh, what do you call it? The, the the trash talking and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, crossplay is yeah. a good thing. Um, you know, whether they want to jump on board or not, they have the reasons. I just, I'm just not buying the reason that they've kind of given us at E3, but yeah. What well, and then e even the, the, the reason that we think like, you know, it's probably because they, they don't want people to, to not buy a PS4 because they don't have to, if they want to play with their friends. I, I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, who's going to go out and spend three or $400 to, to play the same game that they already own on a console that they have? Just because they want to play it with 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 their friends, I, I mean, you know, if if I really wanted to play Minecraft with uh, with like let's say my brother, I could buy a PS4 just to play Minecraft. But you know, Rocket League, Minecraft, these games are doing crossplay. They're they're multi platform games. You can buy them on any platform. And I don't see anybody saying like, oh, you know, my buddy that has a PS4 <laughs> also plays Rocket League, so now I have to buy that PS4, even though I'm I'm an Xbox gamer and I'd prefer to play on Xbox, and I already have Rocket League on that system. But wouldn't it make someone want to buy another console if they push more for saying, hey, guess what? If you buy our console, you can play everywhere but on the other console because they don't have it for a console. No, yeah. it is. It's, like, more of a, it's more of a selling point for, for Microsoft and Nintendo to use right exactly. now because Sony isn't on board. It's, it's a, basically it's something that they can put in their war chest to, to pull out at a later point in time. Like, mm -hmm. you know, play it on Xbox and you can play with everyone except for PlayStation owners i guess my just my biggest issue like i said it's not about bashing sony because if you know in all if this is the decision they think is right then that is their choice i just don't believe them coming out and saying that you know um minecraft's uh demographic is of all ages but mostly very young and they need to obviously think of their players i understand that but being a mom um, my kids already play online, so what does it matter if they're playing online with different, like, especially PC, like, if they're, like, if they were playing Minecraft on PC, they're playing with, like, a lot bigger of an audience than on consoles, to be honest. So, that, that, it's just, that logic is what, I guess, pushes me and makes me really confused because being a mom myself, my kids already play online. So, whether they're playing online with only console people from Xbox or playing on PC with only PC people, opening it up to other consoles or PC is still the same. They're still playing online with other people, no matter how you look at it. Yeah. I, yeah, it just sucks because are you really sure you're doing this for your player base? I mean, maybe they should put up to a vote for the people that are on PlayStation. And maybe they could choose whether they want uh, I, to play I mean, with everybody else or not. I don't. I don't think that. And this is not in any way uh, a diss against PlayStation. This is more against Sony. Um, Sony doesn't have the best customer service. If we've looked at their, yes, you know, people's I... accounts getting hacked and, and people getting like you know hundreds of games charged onto their credit card and then trying to get a refund because it was fraudulent and then getting their entire account just like disabled and all their digital purchases wiped away. It's 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 a Sony problem. Not I don't see it as a PlayStation problem. I see it as a Sony problem, and and I don't think that even if the PlayStation community were to get up in arms about it, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe because the PS4 is is Sony's like you know big seller right now. That's that's what's really keeping a lot of their their company afloat. Maybe they would give in eventually, but it, it, that's going to be a, a hard war to fight for for PlayStation fans. That's true. Yeah. But I, it just I, it just sucks to the, the fact that you have less options on a rival system like you know what i mean 
why not go games. with the Xbox where you could have all those choices? So, yeah, it sucks either way. It'll only get worse with them when more people start buying the best multi-plat over in the Xbox One X. So, you know. Well, and, and a lot of that's going to come down to, you know, the, the, the overall <laughs> narrative that the, the gaming media puts out there. Um, if if they're honest about how games look on the One X and, and how open Microsoft is being and how we're getting access to, to new applications like Spotify and all these kinds of options and mm -hmm. we, we have cross-play and stuff like that, if the media gets on board, that's what's going to get the casual gamer to, to look at the Xbox in a different light. So so that, you know, is, as much as we're, like, fighting that good fight and, you know, talking about our own opinions about gaming and what we see going on in the industry... It really comes down to the the big players like like Polygon, like IGN, and things like that to to really get the word out. And and whether or not that's going to happen, we're we're going to have to wait and see what happens over the next twelve to eighteen months after the uh, the Xbox One X launches. Yeah, but again, this I can see it in both. What like just on this topic alone, I can still see it from both sides. I just think the reasoning that Jim Ryan came out and said, I just as a parent myself, I I don't find that really reasonable but that's just my personal opinion um mm -hmm. it's just more or less what jim ryan had to say is just things i don't agree with if sony has their you know their stand on this that's fine then take your stand and you know it does suck for your player base especially if that it was something they wanted but again i just don't like their reasoning is my only issue yeah. Right. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. The The reason that they've put out there, just like you said, even as a parent, it doesn't make too much sense because whether enough. your kids are online on, on one online ecosystem or whether they get cross-play with a bunch of other consoles, they're still online with the same type of people that are playing games. Exactly. All right, but mm -hmm. I think we beat that conversation to death pretty yeah, much. Yeah, it's, it's dead. Beat it like a drum, girl. <laughs> exactly. And some. So it's KO. <laughs> We are now going to move on to, uh, I guess, the opposite side of the gaming industry, and that is Destiny 2 is restricting PC-specific applications. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Destiny 2 pre-orders surpass Destiny 1. I'm not surprised about... Uh, yeah. Okay, so first, I just want to add, uh, I'm not surprised that Destiny 2 uh, surpassed Destiny 1 pre-orders because of the fact the beta was actually pretty, you know, pretty out there and they gave you so much well-in-depth story. However, yeah. my only issue, my only issue when it comes to this is even though we saw an amazing story at the beginning and we saw, like, this awesome big bad boss... Did they show us th the main highlights? You know how you get some, like, movie commercials where yeah. they, like, show you the best parts of the movie and then you watch the movie and you're like, wow, that was really I saw it. everything already. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah. I worry about that. That's something I worry about. But I'm still not surprised. There's a huge, Destiny has a huge, huge, huge fan base. So right. for pre-orders, I'm not surprised. However, the Destiny 2 restrictions on the PC... Now, this is kind of interesting. Um, this kind of would have been more of a topic to talk with GKB about, because um, I don't think you guys really p uh, play on PC, if I'm correct, right? Right. Not console too much, but I, 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 was, I was all PC gaming in the past, but I'm, I'm all console right now. Bro, What's we're not talking about the 90s. thing you speak of? Hey, oh, come oh, on. No. It wasn't the 90s. It was the early 2000s. <laughs> Who's ready to clean us in here? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like... But, okay, so, I'm just going to throw, right. you know, throw some of this stuff out. Um, yes. The PC restrictions is, for instance, um, you won't be able to actually use uh, Discord. Like, uh, okay, so, over um, OBS uses uh, a Discord app, which I guess mm. apparently won't allow you to use it. Well, I think with, with OBS, it was that uh, OBS itself, like, does a little bit of uh, uh, code injection into the software client. Yes. And, and that's the reason why they have it disabled. Um, it, with Discord, uh, they, they're basically, they're, they're disabling the pop-up notifications that you get on your PC screen whenever somebody sends you a new message. Um, right. but, but with OBS, it was they're, they're restricting all, all capture software that does That's anything crazy. with code injection because they're worried about, uh, like, they, they made it sound like they're worried about people cheating. 
And well, yeah, which is understandable. Like, um, right. Bungie confirmed that third-party applications uh, that are dependent on overlays would not support Destiny 2 on PC. Although this would be an issue for the actual apps, uh, blog posts, uh, states that both Discord and Mumble, who's talking, and virtual uh, notification features won't work. Now, a lot of people use these for, um, obviously... Um, for chatting uh, so that, you know, because it's it's easier to use than Skype and um, Mumble is a, like a good MMO chat system that's used. So the fact that you won't be able to use these, I'm guessing you'd have to use only like only the in-game chat, which could, you know, I don't Oh, I don't know how I straight up trash. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know how I feel well, about and, that. Like, because they also, also they, they said they're they're even disabling other other software like like Fraps with uh, if if anybody's not a PC gamer, Fraps is a uh, a software that lets you basically judge your performance of the game and see what your frames per second is if if the game doesn't have any inbuilt uh, overlay to see that. So basically, they, they don't even want you to know how well the game is performing so that you can adjust your sliders and everything to get the best frame rate possible. It it, it almost makes me sound like disabling that is is more like a, a way of saying, like, our game isn't that well optimized, and we don't want people to know that. Well, that's true. Like, uh, they do go into saying that, like, gameplay capture software methods such as Elgato's, which is what I use, which is not... I'm not happy about that. Uh, and dedicated streaming PCs... They will support full screen mode, but for windowed mode, I thought I thought it was it's a, it works in windowed mode, but not full screen. No, um, the articles that I read uh, said that um, uh, Elgato, uh, Avira Media, and uh, oh, oh, yeah. dedicated streaming PCs will support. Yes, uh, full yes. If, screen if you have mode. if you so. have uh, streaming hardware like an Elgato capture card. That will work yes. in full screen, but like if you wanted to use OBS if, to uh, to broadcast your game, you have to do that in windowed mode in order for it to, to even pick up the, uh, the the game and work. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to get to next. Is uh, you know, uh, it's OBS and XSplit will not work in full screen. Uh, they will work in window mode in both screen capture and window capture mode. Uh, while sim while similar applications. Like, Razer will have similar limitations. Um, I still don't agree with this. Regardless of, you know, whether they're putting limitations... I, I get they're trying to stop with cheating, but your OBS, that has nothing to do with cheating. Right. Excellent. Well, and, and that's the thing. nothing to do with it. You know, the, the code injection that, that software like OBS uses or any of the other the software that was mentioned, they could, if, if they had diligent programmers, they could come up with a way to, to prevent other code injection and still allow this software to work, to basically have approved code injection, knowing that this software is defined, that it's going to use the same type of code every time that they use OBS to stream the game or anything like that. So it now I, I didn't know, is this is this going to be true for the full release, or is this only true for the beta? Uh, so... Well, right now, everything that I read is because of the beta. Because yeah. the beta is coming out in a couple of days, like in a couple of weeks or whatever. Right. But uh, the... um, nothing is final for the game yet because they need that feedback from people. Right. Well, I, I mean, I think the feedback they're going to get from a lot of PC gamers is, hey, let yeah. me use all the shit that I've been using for, exactly. for all these years. <laughs> um, I, I took it as this is, you know, you're not going to be able to use this stuff for the beta. And, and to me, that seems a little bit fishy because maybe they don't want people streaming what the beta looks like. Maybe they don't want them using TeamSpeak. Uh, is, is that even still a thing or am I, am I getting too old school there? Or, or Discord or, or whatever the chat <laughs> software they use. That's pretty <laughs> Usually Discord and like Mumble are the main ones right. that get used nowadays. See, showing my age there, showing my age. Uh, it's okay, but bro. like, you know, maybe they don't want people talking in a party uh, through another piece of software about like, oh man, I'm playing the Destiny 2 beta and it's not what I hoped it would be. It, it just, it, everything that I, I read about the stuff that they're restricting makes, makes me think that the game is not well optimized for PC and they want to mm -hmm. keep that mm -hmm. on the, the hush as much as possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of weird. People do need to remember, this is possible that, it, like, a lot of the articles that I was going back and forth on, some said beta, but some actually did say that this was going to be a main factor into the game itself. 
because again they don't want people screwing with uh inputting codes and stuff and like that into the game um, true but they could also just be assuming but yes i, I understand yes, of course well nobody really knows until the game uh launches and the game isn't actually launching until october 24th which is almost like what almost two months after uh it releases on consoles uh the beta is releasing on august 28th though so for anyone who does play on pc uh you can get your hands on the uh if you pre-ordered you do have to pre-order um the destiny 2 beta for pc but again i guess no one's really going to know till it gets closer to launch but right. this is a big title going to pc so they could have a lot of limitations because uh, World of Warcraft and other games from Blizzard and stuff like that, um, they, they're very particular on what coding they allow into their games. Mm -hmm. So for Bungie to be just as, you know, picky, it's understandable because this is obviously Activision who is like, hey, we need to watch this. But at the same time, they do know how to do all this stuff because of Blizzard and everything that Blizzard does. Right. Well, and, yeah, and uh, Blizzard that. actually helped them with the PC version, actually. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's going to be sold on and their I, stores. I, yep. I completely understand the, the doing everything you can to prevent cheating on PC because that, that is a, a huge issue that PC gamers have to deal with. But, you know, if, if you're playing anything else on Battle.net, like StarCraft 2 or, or anything else that's on there, can you use OBS with those other games? Because if you can, then the whole we're trying to prevent cheating argument kind of gets thrown out the window because I'm sure Blizzard does everything in their power to make sure nobody cheats on a game like StarCraft 2, which is a huge competitive game. Yes, well, I can say I can say for sure that Overwatch on PC, you can use Discord, from what I know. So, that's one of their games. Right. So if these other games that are running on Battle.net can use this software, it, it doesn't make sense for, for Destiny 2 to not be able to use it. It's just... It's, it's a very confusing situation to me. But I think... See, again, this is where I don't think it's the fact, like, you can't use Discord. I think it's more when... Okay, so the way that they make it seem is, like, when you're just mainly trying to capture... Like, there's not, like a lot of the articles, I don't know if anyone really re stopped and looked at, kind of looks more like they're just going towards people who are streaming or trying to capture with OBS and XSplit. These two... Okay, uh... Me being a streamer, I use OBS. Uh, so let me explain what I think maybe they're trying to more or less get at. Um, when they talk about Discord, there is an overlay app that can actually go into Discord. And that can go into your OBS. So that it actually links the two up and you can actually see that on your Discord. Um, it's, it's the same thing with XSplit. And I believe Mumble has one and a couple of these other... Uh, uh, actual uh, capture places have different chats that you can use. And I'm kind of wondering if that's more or less what they're more referring to. Than... Yeah, so you're saying you're saying that it still work, but you can't you don't have all the features, basically. Yeah, like, I, I'm sure you would still be able to actually, like, say if you're sitting here playing Destiny 2 on your PC and you have Discord up to talk to your friends because you don't want right. to, like, use... I'm sure you can still use uh, Discord just fine with having the game up and running. Because okay. a PC obviously runs apps in the background. So right. it's not no. like that is actually being put into Destiny 2. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it sounded to me like it was just the, the Discord notifications that you might normally see on screen. Those would be disabled. Yeah. I guess so yeah, if, if you were in a chat on Discord, it would still work. Is. Okay, I just wanted to jump in right quick and go like... It's already complicated enough to deal with the PC <laughs> bullshit. On top of that, you gotta deal with this hot mess? I'm sorry, but fuck that. I'm so I'm just being honest. I just, All the stuff you guys are talking about, I'm like, yeah, I ain't got no time for that. <laughs> if I really wanted Destiny, let me get it on an Xbox or a PlayStation, I don't care which one, put it in, and it works. And I already have Party Chat there in my system. And I could fucking stream it if I want because we have Mixer and we have YouTube on the PlayStation and we have uh, Twitch on both. Whatever. It's just, it seems so complicated just to deal with PC bullshit on top of the fact that you have to worry about which graphic cards, how many fucking RAMs, because there uh -huh. is spe um, specs that you do have to follow to actually yeah. play this game. And I'm already, like, tired of this whole conversation. Well, no offense. Uh, according to my brother, <laughs> until you play a game at 144 frames per second, you haven't played a game yet. I mm. hear that oh, a wow. lot, but, you know, I play <laughs> games on PC, and it really doesn't make much of a difference to me. 
But for anyone who, you know, can make sense of exactly what these articles are going on about, leave comments below. We'd love to, you know, hear your thoughts and what you guys think. But to me personally, the way they come off is it seems more like this is pointed towards streamers and content that, creators. That's what it really... That's what it really seems like to me. Like, I, I have a feeling that, uh, you know, Activision and Bungie, they're going to get a lot of feedback from from people in the PC community that are big on Twitch and big on Mixer, saying, like, you know, th this just isn't going to work. Uh, right. you, your game is not going to be as popular as it should be unless you allow the software to work. And I think that's the big takeaway from, from what is being restricted on it. Not only that, streamers sell your game. So, like, right. you should work with them. If not, nobody's going to watch. So, fix your shit. That is true. Right. I ain't saying much because I can't comment on dog shit. I don't have a dog and don't have shit. So there we go. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Newf is feeling some type of way today. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Um, I also wanted to comment on what you mentioned earlier about, like, this had more pre-order sales or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, then, well, okay, the reason why I think that is is because of the whole PC crap. So the fact that you're adding another platform to it, that one's getting pre-orders as well. So I think that's the only reason that I can think of. No, I have another reason why it has more, uh... Okay, so pre-orders just goes for people who go, obviously, and pre-order it, correct? Uh, mm -hmm. well, first off, ha it was the only way to get the beta. So, of Right, course, right, it was the only people... way to get early access to the beta. <laughs> I thought about that, too. For people who wanted to, like, get access to the beta, like, early access, because, of course, it was open later on, but for those who wanted it early, they all went and pre-ordered it. Did they keep their pre-orders? Well, they're not specifying that now, are they? No, no, they're not. Especially the Cage 6 mm. uh, little action figure. Yes, yeah. that too. That's why I got it. That <laughs> that's why I got it. <laughs> that's the other thing. But that's a, perfect, that's a perfect point out, though. You could literally go pre-order, get a code, and get that figure, and then cancel your pre-order and then be done. So... Yeah. I'd like to know how many actually kept their actual... I, I kept mine. I'm still planning to buy it. Whether I'm going to take it in the ass at the end of the day or not, um, I still got mine pre-ordered. <laughs> I still have mine pre-ordered, so... Get your Vaseline, everybody. That's right. Destiny comes with a free loo of KY jelly. Boom! I don't even want to know. I just <laughs> okay. So um, before Explore we jump, before we jump into our next topic, we are going to actually jump into Mike's segment of the day and Bang Boom Kapow! It's what's out now. Are those really the lyrics? Take it away, Mike. All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? So we are going to be talking about what is out now. So we've got a lot to cover here over the past uh, week or so. Getting a little bit out of that summer lull. So last week on August 1st for the PlayStation 4, we got Patapon Remastered. This is a really cool rhythm-based game. It was a really super cute and fun game on the PSP. If you never played it and you're looking for a rhythm-based game, I'd say definitely check that out. Also on that same day, August 1st, for PSVR, we got Dino Frontier. Uh, from what I understand, it's basically like a prehistoric SimCity in virtual reality, so maybe that might could be fun. <laughs> that same day for PS4, Xbox One, and PC, we got the full release of The Long Dark. This game has been in preview for a while on the Xbox One. From what I understand, it's the epitome of what a survival game should be, and if that is your kind of game, definitely check it out. Uh, also, on the 1st of August for PC, we got a game called Redeemer. Uh, it's basically like a brawler, a uh, brawler-type game. So if you need a brawler in your life and you're playing on PC, uh, that's a good game to pick up. Then the next day, on August 2nd, for the Xbox One and the PC, we got the release of Tacoma. Uh, this is, uh, from their own description, it's a narrative-driven adventure set aboard a high-tech space station in the year 2088. It's been getting really amazing review scores thus far, uh, so if, if that description uh, really floats your boat, uh, that's, a, that's a good game to look at. Uh, also on the 2nd of August for PC, we got The Legend of Heroes Trials of Cold Steel. This was a PS Vita game back in December of 2015. It's a JRPG, so if you're looking for a new JRPG on your PC to play, uh, I'd look into that. Uh, again, Legend of Heroes Trials of Cold Steel. 
Now, moving into uh, a little bit more recent, today, August 8th, for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, we got the Mega Man Collection 2. This game includes Mega Man 7, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, I, I love the Mega Man games. Uh, I haven't picked up the first Mega Man Collection, but once I do pick that up and play through it, I'm definitely going to be getting this one. Also today for the PC and PS4, we got a game called Cat Quest. Uh, you didn't hear me wrong. That's a Cat Quest. What? It's an open-world RPG. <laughs> and this is this is directly from their description. This open-world RPG is set in the possum world of cats. Mm. So oh, my God. <laughs> take that for what it is. Uh, <laughs> Also for PC and PS4 today, we got Hellblade, uh, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. Um, this game looks absolutely awesome. It's a it's an action adventure game. It's made by Ninja Theory. They they made the Heavenly Sword game and also the Devil May Cry remake. So if you like that type of action adventure game, I, I mean this game just looks phenomenal. And uh, I, I hope that maybe in the future there might be an Xbox One port down the road. Uh, also today, another game that's been uh, big news recently, uh, more because of the, the developer behind it, uh, Lawbreakers for PC and PS4. I, I mean, I haven't played it, but basically my impression is it's Overwatch with gra gravity manipulating powers. Uh, so far, there, there's not a whole lot of score on Metacritic for it, so I, I don't know if it's good or if it's not. Uh, from what I heard of the beta, it's, it's kind of hit or miss, depending on whether you like it. Uh, and then on uh, PC, PS4, and Xbox One today, we got the very first episode of Batman The Enemy Within from Telltale Games. This is the second season of the Telltale Games Batman series. It's bringing the Riddler in as the main enemy, and it looks like we're going to see a lot more of the Joker this season than what we saw last season. So if you liked Batman when it came out uh, last year for the first season, then you're definitely going to be interested in getting this new season. Uh, again, starting today, episode one, The Enemy Within. And The Enemy Within Episode 1 right now is free. So, uh, you know, a lot of times with Telltale Games, we don't see the free first episode until after all five episodes have come out. True. Now you can play the first episode for free, and I think that's an awesome way to basically get people hooked on to it so that they'll buy that season pass. I, I know I'm going to be downloading it as soon as the show is over. Nice. Now... It's also a new month. It is August now, and with a new month comes new games added to the Xbox Game Pass. We got seven games added on the 1st of August. We got Dirt Rally, Dead Rising 3, Limbo, Ultratron, So Many Me, Metal Slug XX, and Pharaonic. I, some of those games I don't know too much, uh, but I know Dead Rising 3, Limbo, Dirt Rally, those are all big games, so if you've got Game Pass... Definitely check those games out. If you're thinking about Game Pass and you've never played these games but you're interested in it, pay the $9.99 for the month and try those three games out. I'm sure it's it definitely those three games by itself is worth the 10 bucks to get 30 days worth of access to them. And uh, in the last week, we have had a couple of additions to backwards compatibility on Xbox One. We got Epic Mickey 2. Uh, I didn't play that, but I did play the first one. And uh, Epic Mickey 2 on the 360... Looks like a pretty fun game, especially if you're a fan of Disney and the uh, the Kingdom Hearts series. Looking at you, She Wolf, you might want to look into this game. Maybe uh, the Sega <laughs> Vintage Collection, which has to Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, for for a lot of kids from the '90s, Toe Jam and Earl was huge when the Sega Master System uh, slash Sega Genesis came out. It was it was a big popular game, so I know I'm looking forward to reliving my childhood and downloading this. Uh, also, we got Batman: Arkham Origins. Oh, yeah. Now, this is a disc-only backwards compatible title. I can only assume that there's some sort of a licensing issue where they can't sell it digitally, but if you can get the disc version, uh, Batman Arkham Origins, it was, it was developed by not the main studio that did the Batman Arkham games, but it was still a really good game into the, the franchise. It's kind of like a prequel to Batman Arkham Asylum. It's, it's the Batman Year One storyline, and uh, it was a lot of fun if you missed it on 360. Definitely see if you can find a, a copy of that game in a used games bin and, and give that a shot there. Uh, a couple of uh, not-so-exciting back compat mentions. We got Disney's Bolt, uh, Deadliest Warrior, and Fighting Vipers. Uh, I'm not too excited about them, but more games being added to backwards compatibility is always a good thing. Hopefully one day soon we'll have that entire Xbox 360 catalog available as back compat to Xbox One. Oh, shit. My brain would blow up. And... That, everyone, is What's Out Now. Awesome. Awesome. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone heard the new intro because everybody commented on it, so I'm assuming 
assuming people actually saw it, which is good to know. Yes, it worked. I listened to it. Yay! <laughs> it's uh, I was funny. So worried. I was like, <laughs> I like, I like, so. I'm I'm not able to look at like the chat, so I'm sorry for anyone who's like you know writing me and stuff like that. I'm trying to like keep everything going, and it's hard to see the script. And I'm literally only doing this on two monitors, so it's she's like, awesome producer. Yeah, I I'm trying here. So I have I just finally got to look at the chat, and I was trying to make sure the song was working. So again, I'm sorry, guys. I do appreciate all you guys that are here watching and you know with us through all of this and. Again, we definitely yeah. miss GKB, so again, I'm sorry that I'm not paying attention to the <laughs> chat, but I do love you guys. Um, all right, so jumping Cra into the next topic, Crash, hey, Crap was, uh, Crap was saying that there's a draft coming from the back door. He's wondering why you didn't leave it open for him. Well, Kapow! I was going to say that apparently he yeah, knew how to I, kick I in slipped the door, in. So. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm here. What's up? What's going on? Oh my on, god, it's the crap gamer. <laughs> oh my god, I had, I had to slide in here and, and, and say what's up and oh, uh, and help you guys out. How you guys doing, man? I've been up, been forever. Been about a minute since I've been on here. It's about that a minute. I talked to you yesterday. Crap. What's up? Well, I mean, <laughs> since I've been on Council Corner, like I'm I'm not allowed on here anymore. Like I'm banned again or something. That's a lie. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Never. that's true. I heard about that, yeah. but uh, yeah, right. It's fine. Like, no it's fine rhinos now. or something. I'm like, <laughs> like, I don't know what the deal is. Like you guys are. <laughs> Like against rhinos, but man, I'm not digging that. You guys gotta start get us a graphic and no rhino. To... <laughs> you guys gotta start no letting rhinos the rhinos allowed. in here again. Mm -hmm. You know, we we cause a ruckus. You know, we bring the we bring the heat, man. I, I'm coming here, start kicking things. What are we talking about? Uh, all right, so know. this topic, uh, I'm sure you can actually comment on. Uh, Crash Bandicoot did so great that Activision. Uh, Oh, they, they're talking okay. about remastering other yes. games, right? Hold on. Yes, sorry. Uh, I, like, lost my thought here for a minute. Crash, <laughs> uh, Crash Bandicoot did great for Activision. Will this open the door for more remasters like Spyro? Oh, my God. Please, please, please. I love Spyro, and I would Hell buy yeah. that in a heartbeat if they remastered Spyro. That was well, like... <laughs> well, I mean, look. Crash did extremely well. It's five weeks in a row, number one in the UK. Sold extremely well here in the U.S., um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that uh, the company that made the reboot or remasters actually makes a full new game uh, in that state in that same kind of vein because they actually had to remake those games from scratch with no code from the original games and they did that really faithfully. So um, yeah, Activision they want money, they like money, they see an opportunity to make money off nostalgia. It's a hell of a drug, and uh, I, I could definitely see them bringing some stuff back, you know. And yeah. uh, I wouldn't mind, you know, like three games for forty bucks. Hell of a deal. Even though I'm not a huge Activision fan, uh, you know, who can really complain about, about 40 bucks for three games, you know? Well, it's... Especially Spyro, because there's actually quite a few Spyro games that if they, like, just did, like, a Spyro collection, it would be, like, another Crash Bandicoot, which I think would actually do really well. And that's actually one I would buy again, because, like I said, I love Spyro. I grew up playing Spyro. And, heck, I would still play it today if I wanted to pull out the old systems, but I really don't want to pull out well, and that, that, so. that, that's, that's a true. really good point that you would you would you said you would still play it today if you want if you felt like breaking out the old systems i think that that one of the best things about getting these remasters of of classic games like this is not only are you getting uh, a new generation of gamers to experience these characters and these games um you know the, the remasters they're a great way to carry the game forward and, and make sure that it's going to continue to work on the current hardware and as an Xbox owner uh, for the Xbox One, I, I know that their philosophy is that we're going to get to play all of our games going forward from this generation on. So if the, the Crash uh, Insane Trilogy gets ported over to Xbox One, which rumors heavily lead it to, to sound like it is going to be, and if a Spyro remaster comes out, if you buy this on Xbox One, no matter what Xbox you get in the future, you're still going to have access to this game without having to pull out that that dusty old PlayStation 1 or, or whatever old hardware you had the games on originally. Um, they, I know I, I pulled out my old uh, NES for, for my kids to try out to introduce them to old gaming, and they, they were totally uninterested. But to get remasters of classic games, that's a way to get them into it where I can like basically show like share part of my childhood with my yeah. children, and I think that's a great yeah. thing. Well, the thing about Spyro, though, um, I know I say this one a lot, but the reason I say uh, this game in particular is, one, okay, yes, I love the game, but it's not even just that. Uh, Spyro was introduced into, um, uh, what the heck is that damn game? 
Skylanders. Skylanders, yes. Skylanders. Yes. Which is a very, very, very big thing with the younger generations. And I even know some older generate, like some of the older gamers that actually play Skylanders. But Spiral was introduced, and people mm-hmm. don't actually, like, who play him don't actually know his story and they don't actually know the games that he came from and no I, I know all about that because my, my kid he plays skylanders like every year i have to get him whatever the newest one is my son's favorite one is spyro but yet i say oh do you know where spyro's from he's like no i never even knew that spyro <laughs> was in the skylanders games until one yep. day we were like out shopping for like new skylanders for for him to to to, to get for his birthday or something like that and i saw spyro the dragon i was like holy crap spyro is in this game that, that's amazing. And then I, I, I learned more about it because I'd never played the game with him or anything. I just mm-hmm. saw him playing it. And, and Spyro is like the first Skylander. I like, I guess this is Skylanders is more of a like an offshoot of the Spyro series. Kind of. It is, but it, it's. It's not because he's not the like obviously the main focus. There's a lot of other main characters that are in Skylanders. But right. it's just. Because of him being in Skylanders, that would help promote the remaster even farther. Absolutely. Well, they, they put Crash in in, in Skylanders. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, they, that was recent. Yeah, right? before they before they came out with the with the remasters, they had him in uh, the Imaginators or whatever that was. He had his own like. Uh, uh, his I own haven't stuff. gotten him that one yet. That that'll be the one I get him for Christmas this year. I hope he's not listening. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> supposedly that that one's a pretty good one though. So I mean, uh, that's that that's got to be pretty cool, and that's a good way to introduce people to it. Again, these platformers are extremely popular. Again, they kind of you know came back a little bit. I wish Microsoft would have went a little bit more high end, maybe brought back a banjo or something. But what are you gonna do? You know, hopefully this like gets them off their asses, and they're like, hey, let's bring back some of these classic characters yeah. because everybody wants the nostalgia stuff. People keep saying, hey. This stuff doesn't sell. This stuff doesn't sell. And then here you are. You see on one platform, this thing's like selling like crazy. Yeah, it's insane right. how well this stuff is selling. Well, it, 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 I mean, you kind of have to look at it, though. Like, it's it's the summer drought in gaming. So would, would Crash yep. be at the top of the list if it was, like, say, October? Probably not. But but that makes this the perfect time of year for this type of game to come out. And and like you were saying, it, it's selling like crazy. It's it's the number one seller in the UK for five weeks in a row. I really hope that this paves the way uh, to get a, a new entry in the series, not just remasters of, of old games that, that we may have played before to introduce a new audience to them, but, but let the developers see that there is interest in this franchise. There is interest in platformers that we've been severely lacking, not just this generation, but but even the previous generation. There weren't that many platformers, uh, unless you had a Nintendo console. And I would like to see that that come back, um, even though they may be considered as as kiddie type games. Like if if I was a teenager, I probably wouldn't be into these. But you know, even now as an adult you know, nostalgia, it's a hell of a drug. So I, I would like to go back to, to playing Spyro, playing Crash, playing, you know, Super Mario and all that kind of stuff. Conquer, I mean, Mario sells Conquer well on every not Nintendo. Really for young audiences, but it'd be great to see <laughs> an actual remaster of those well, games. Yeah, Conquer. Yeah. Let me just say that, you know, bringing back franchises like Crash or, or, or Spyro through Activision is not necessarily surprising. Activision is the kind of company folks that if they were throwing a party, they'd give you you as many tacos as you could eat till you got a bad case of the shits and they would charge you for the toilet paper that's how <laughs> those guys roll but here's here's no the deal and, and and this is this is why we're seeing a lot of remasters and a lot of classics come back because at the end of the day it's a safe bet they know there was an audience there yeah. i also think that nintendo's success with the classic and things that they're doing has really spurred this industry uh forward to another degree and while a lot of people say oh another remaster oh we hate this we hate that just remember the thing is, they don't have to hire a team to write the game because the games are written. So there's no, they don't, you know, like, like it's, it's a, they can turn around the process a lot faster and it's an easier and safer gamble with game costs now in development going to three years and, you know, 20, 50 million dollars. These, these ones, like they can turn these around in like a year or so because basically they're just upgrading the code and uh, they can get smaller teams to do them. They make way more money because they weren't, and, and they sell them at a decent price right at the gate. Right. So, like, no, I mean, again, yeah, and and those investments in turn help finance other investments down the road, and it's the same reason why this new game Hellblade, like uh, like they did, like the game is half as long. 
but it's uh, and, and half the price because that's the thing. I think a lot of developers are going to move forward with this kind of trend because what's going to happen is they're going to see if there's an audience for the game without really taking a big hit right out of the gate. And then if the game is really successful, well, then they can get the budget to make the sequel that much bigger. Yeah, and, and I hear what you're saying there, Noof, but but at the same time, I, I don't want to dismiss what the, the developers here have done with the, the Crash uh, Insane Trilogy launch. Um, you, you said that you know in, in a year they could turn this around and launch it because they're just updating the code, but my understanding is that for the Crash reboot, they couldn't just update the code. They had to write all the code from scratch because yeah. either the None of it existed. code was missing yeah. Um, yeah. or the code was just so uh, antiquated uh, from the old hardware that it doesn't work on the new hardware. I, I think it was that the code was just missing. They, they didn't have the original code anymore to do those updates. So they, they actually like started this pretty much from scratch. They had the layout and the template from the first games. Right. So they didn't have to put a whole lot of thought into it. But the code, they had to, they had to make that all brand new. Plus, if people are saying they want it, why not bring it back? It's as simple as yeah. that. Like if, right. pe like, if people are wanting it and asking for it, then why not? Like, there was a really big, like, one of the biggest reasons this is being talked about was after Crash had released, and it did so well, uh, there was this forum going on, on, uh, I believe it was Riddick, uh, about, obviously, again, uh, it's gonna be Spyro that they were all talking about because it's known from Skylanders. It's a very popular game and we've seen them in other uh, games in the last couple years as well. Uh, just making guest appearances. But it's because people ask for games like these that they come back and they do so well. And Activision, we all know, they want money. They love money and that's what <laughs> they're good at is giving you things you want that you're going to pay for. So They're good at milking. Very they true. are. They are. Ooh. They're very good at it. <laughs> but well, the, movie, I, I... the movie industry does the same thing, but instead of being called a remaster, they call it a reboot. So if they feel there's still money left in a franchise, no matter how old it is, that's what they do. They bring it back out, and it's again, the stories are basically written, and they just rework the franchise and see how much more, in, more money they can get out of it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh I'm okay with that. Like, I, even though I wasn't a big uh, fan of Crash, like, yeah, I played it, but it wasn't one of my favorites. Um, when they remake um, Ratchet and Clank, that was, I thought that was pretty good for them to do that and bring life to that game again. Um, so if they do that for Spyro, that would be even better because my niece actually knows who that is, and I could play with her on there, and it just it's just gonna make you feel like you're a kid again, basically. I agree. I agree. Alrighty, so let's move on to the next topic, which is, hmm, we got several here. Ooh, I'm going to bring this one up because me and Fox kind of talked about this a little bit. Uh, Arrow Dev takes, uh, not really shots, but more or less is tired of, obviously, the fanboy wars. And they turn around and said, hey, Enough is enough. We're taking a break. We're stepping back from this because it's just not relevant. And I agree. I agree. Yeah. Not only that, they're they're not scared to say which platform they're really looking forward to. Apparently, the platform is still getting hate to this day for some reason. So they're really looking forward to the Xbox One X. And they got hate for that, yes. And it's stupid that they did because their games are on all platforms. They just love the fact that it is new technology that they're going to be able to get their hands on to push their games farther. There's nothing wrong with that. That is what we should want as gamers for developers to come out and be happy about new hardware that they can actually push their their talents to the farthest. And for people to show them hate because they were excited for a new console, that was ridiculous. Like completely ridiculous. Hey, you know what? Like, I, I like what they said. I mean, I don't. I love the console war, as you guys know. I, I dig it. I think it's funny. What you uh, console yeah. never? Yeah, I mean, look, look. I, I like the console war, like the, the 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 actual console war stuff, not like the personal. Yeah, you suck, and your mother wears. Yeah, not the crazy boots. fanboy weirdos. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. I'm, not, I'm not into that, but I I do but like button heads about of yeah, it. yeah. You know, because guess what? Fan is short for folks. Fanatic, and uh, we're all fanatics, and so. Uh, I just am better at at promoting that than than a lot of other people and doing that. But what the developer did say was he thought the Xbox One X was a powerful piece of equipment and that he a beast. it is a beast and he <laughs> liked like, like me, you know. Um, wow. I don't know that one, but certainly somebody, not kick, him out. Out somebody yeah. kick him out right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So so he was talking about how. Um, 
you know, he plays Xbox every day. He likes the achievement system, which is cool, right? Because that is actually uh, a significant reason to choose Xbox, the ecosystem. You got your achievements. You're going to have the most powerful system. But he says he likes the exclusives on PS4 too. Guess what? Cool. Good for him because I have a PS4 for some of those exclusives as well. So, uh, you know, good on him. Good on him for speaking up because you need developers to come out and speak up like this and yeah. actually kind of uh, put the truth out there. You can't have people to not. And then, you know what? I got Arrow because of that. I'm just saying. Nice. You know, I was like, hey, these developers were out there promoting Xbox. I'm going to support them. And so now I have Arrow. I suck at it. It's an I can't amazing do anything game, though. I love that game. <laughs> I love the music. I, I cannot, I cannot do anything on that game. I <laughs> suck very badly at it, but still, great to see developers out there promoting Xbox and, and keeping it real. You know, yeah. don't do the stuff that these some of these big developers are like. Well, maybe we'll do something. Huh? Maybe I don't know. Maybe, one day, maybe if, if you guys are lucky <laughs> for Christmas, we might. You know, I don't know. But you know, this developer's like, yeah. You know, update it, sure. That's on our to-do list. You know, not like Bungie with Destiny 2. Well, maybe we could do some kind of update. We're definitely doing the 4K thing on PS4 Pro, though, right? Not because they paid us to or anything, but because it's such a beast. You know, that Xbox One X, and we're kind of iffy on that shit, but, you know, PS4 Pro all and day. That's, that's the thing. Again, their game is on all systems. They're just excited. And, they like, I don't know. I just think that's awesome that they came out. Yeah. And they were proud to say that and then said, hey, look. We don't care about your console wars, which, you know, gamers, fine. You want to stick with your console wars? That's your thing. But developers, the ones that actually come out and say, look, we're not into that crap. We can like what we want to like. Don't hate on them for it. <laughs> yeah. And, and the worst thing is, you know, uh, uh, making a game a lot of times is very similar to making, say, a painting, right? And a... And a Obviously, computers and the stuff that a computer is made from or made out of, the type of tech that goes into it, is part of the tools of the trade, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're painting a picture, you got to have a set of brushes. And if you know anything about painting, there's a different type of a brush for different types of things. So, I mean, you know, for average developers, say, if they're trying to get a game onto a certain platform and it just doesn't have the kind of horsepower that they need to really make this game, like, a shine, you know, finally they get the Xbox One X and it's finally, like, you know, getting the complete tool set and, uh, you know, instead of for the last three years painting that picture with a square head brush, now you finally got the highly detailed small brush and uh, the right tools to do it. So I can understand why they're excited. And it's nice that they're speaking out against the BS stuff because, uh, you know, they have the balls to do it because they're a small independent developer, more or less. And a lot of the bigger guys, they don't want to say nothing because most of them have marketing deals and shit like that intact. So they're, they're scared shitless to... Uh, they make it look like they're favoring one more than the other, even though behind closed doors they're all like, damn, this thing is a beast and we're loving working with it, but most of them just won't say it. That is right. true. The whole time you were talking about brushes, I'm thinking about Bob Ross. <laughs> Happy <laughs> little trees. Yeah. <laughs> Happy little trees. Um, I, I think my, my biggest thing is that when whenever it comes to developers in the console war, the, the one thing that is, is pretty much like a pet peeve is I can't stand when developers use the console war to to basically promote their game uh like like what we've seen with with cliffy b over the past like titanfall maybe two or three 2? months or, or titanfall or 2 or detroit I mean. yeah true but like uh like, like cliffy b has been been saying stuff like you know he's been saying a lot of negative things about about xbox fanboys because of the the announcement that his game is coming to ps4 and, and in a way he uses that to to fuel the fire uh as far as what's going to get people interested in his game and i don't think that that is something a developer should do. I, I think that they should talk to all gamers as equals, regardless of what platform they play on, because no matter where you think your game plays best, whether it's PC, whether it's PS4, whether it's Xbox, whether it's even the Nintendo Switch, it, no matter what you think is best, if your game is coming out on multiple platforms, every single person that owns a gaming console is a consumer that could pr possibly be purchasing your game. And if Lawbreakers comes out on Xbox One, say, six months from now, there's going to be a lot of negativity around that game because of the stuff that he's said. And I think that's just not a good thing for, for gamers overall is for developers to be choosing sides like that. Yeah, that also reminds me of the Ghost Sniper thing. Ghost Sniper right, Warrior. Right. Yeah, that, that whole thing. That, see, maybe people would have gave it a chance if you weren't already bashing it before it even came out. 
Yeah, um, maybe Titanfall 2 would have sold a little bit if you weren't dicking over Xbox fans showing saying green discs weren't sexy, huh? That's you know what, what I was going to point out with stuff like that. <laughs> that too. But then you yeah, get Arrow again, which is just a small indie company, turns around and says, nah, we're going to take a step back. Well, we're they just, weren't yeah. wearing a PS4 bust shirt. You know, like, <laughs> like the Titanfall dude. They had respect dude, you know? for the gamers <laughs> and the fact that they yeah. just like yeah. playing games. And that's what, that's what makes them... Honestly, they seem like a bigger developer to me than any of these other big developers because they actually stood for what we all should be standing for, and that's gaming. Yeah, yeah. I, I freaking, uh, you know, I'm happy. We're seeing this more and more. In fact, uh, well, I don't even know your topics or anything because, uh, you know, I hopped in the back door. But um, the interesting thing was uh, the, the Project Cars 2 dev was talking about the significant, uh, you know, advantages of Xbox One X over the PS4 Pro that it's going to look uh, much, much better on the Xbox One X. So mm -hmm. yeah. you have developers actually out there saying these things now. Uh, even Titanfall 2 dev, they said, hey, it's going to be running much better on there. Uh, Arc Survival Evolved. So we're getting See, these kind of things. I, I like how developers are coming, you know, they're coming out of the light and they're like, hey, look, listen, we're talking to you because we're the ones that are making your games. But then you have uh, people in the gaming media, they're not saying anything like that. They're like, Hey, let's just make a negative article about Xbox One X because yeah, that 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 was kind of what Arrow the Arrow devs were talking about too. It's like yeah. we, you know we're tired of all the negative stuff where everybody nothing can be positive, and that is unfortunate. Like check this out, right? You have literally the best console ever created, uh, exactly ninety days away from release, right? So what is there to hate on? I mean, it's it's at a good price point. If you look at inflation, uh, we were talking about it on a BGST that the, the PS3 launched at an inflated price point now that would be $750. So yep. as you can see, we paid more than this for consoles in the past that were mainstream and none of them had the capabilities of this. Uh, you know, like the 4K HDR capture, all that kind of stuff. They're, they're redoing the, the UI, which is phenomenal. In my opinion, I know there's still work for it to be done, but yep. really great first step. Um, everything that they're doing has is, is been really on point and people are acting like, you know, they're doing worse things than they did when they, they announced the, the Xbox. Yeah, like they're twisting your arm or something yeah. to look, look at have Microsoft good stuff. There. Oh, like, <laughs> I can't believe it. I see some of that stuff. Crappy ass tablet still in the stores, like a tablet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Stop bitching about a console. Well, you know, speaking. I bucks for a Sega Saturn back in fucking 1995. I mean, <laughs> you know, come on. Well, speaking <laughs> of uh, the Xbox. We actually got a new update and a new look that released last night at, I think it was like 9 p.m. Eastern time for, um... Segway. Yeah. Right? I am. I'm good at that. <laughs> Applause. I'm, good I'm, I'm at pretty that. good. I, I'm good at I, See, I knew, you, I knew you had to have that on there somewhere, so yes. I'm like, if I bring it up enough, you can, like, segue into it, but yeah, good job you on You just that. had to say Xbox, and I'd be able to segue. I'm good at segueing. Yes. Anyways, seems you just ruined it. Um, <laughs> either way, either way. Um, okay, so Xbox just released a new update, and I don't think I like it. <gasps> what? 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 Well, they did. Okay, so I was uh, playing around with it. One, I'm pretty sure it's only for alpha members, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. First so rank. It's not to everybody. Okay. So first off, I was looking at it. All they did was make everything big. Oh my god! They I can't believe you did. Girl. Like I like the. Okay, so the dashboard, the top of it looks cool or whatever, mm -hmm. but everything else just looks like they made the blocks big. Like, really big. And, like, if you use, like, uh, your triggers to, like, scroll down. GKB found this out last yesterday when he was playing around with it. If you, like, hold your triggers to, like, go down faster to the bottom. If you hold it for too long, it just shoots you back to the bottom of, like, your uh, display, um, your dashboard. So, it doesn't even keep you in, like, the category you were in. It, sh like, well, throws you back to the dashboard. That's just that's just bugs from, I don't from the fact that it's a, a alpha. So, that doesn't matter. I, I, I'm shocked that you don't like the way it looks or, I or I the like... way it's running because it's super fast well no it's fast uh, but that's yeah. fine it's still I'm very particular about how things look and... but the fact that you could customize like what you see on your main page like but we were talking about that on gaming huge. then huge right I did not find anything that allowed me to shrink things down okay and then the sidebar. I like the original sidebar. I don't like having to, like, you go to your people now. It's, like, people. It's not friends anymore. It's people. And, like, to see your friends, you literally have to, like, go to people, go to friends, 
click on friends, then your friends things opens. Like, before on the sidebar, you literally could just go to your friends and then you had a drop down menu and it showed all your friends. But now it's like three freaking menus that pop up. Like, it just seems like so much. Why don't you make some suggestions on it? Because it is alpha and they can change some stuff. Like they said that they're going to update some of the blocks and stuff like that. So um, to me, it's a little bit more like the 360-ish. Uh, so I have really uh, no problem with that. And you, can you complain about how fast it is? I mean, that is like really fast. Super responsive. But Super not- fast. And even the games and apps, like when as soon as you click on that, all your games are visible. Instead yeah. of the fact that you got to wait for them to load up and, and all that. Yeah, that's such a pain in the ass. Like, I'll go and I'll click down to and I'm ready like to waiting install, for my and it just spins there for like five minutes, and I'm like, "Come on, ready to install, bitch!" Oh, that's because you own everything. <laughs> well, that's different, crap. Oh, oh yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is true. It's okay. like it's all like my ready to install list is like 55 or something. It's crazy. Yeah, and I, I and I keep most of the stuff installed. You know what, guys? I just looked up the sound that rhinos make, and it is not intimidating at all. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that? really, Don't really you, bad. I thought that would make some kind of like, you know. If you watch, yeah, the I thought well, Al- albino they, rhinos make it more like intimidating. Stuff. No, albino. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> These things sound like pussies, man. Like, yes. I'm like, come on. Oh, it and makes sense now. Them, I mean, what? So no, no, no. I'm, no. I'm, I'm like a. Uh, Anyways, I'm, I'm a... this show is not about rhinos. Uh, I know. I'm just. I was just detracting a little bit. And yeah, and that is the one thing that you're good at is getting us off topic. So, uh, yeah, back on sorry. topic, I still um, don't so like I, it. I don't care. I don't like the freaking... I, li- I miss the sidebar. I miss well, so the, I mean, the sidebar. Okay. Oh, wait. Is, is it just me or does... I mean, for, for me, like, every time a new update comes out for the, the operating system, I, I'm always hesitant to accept it for the first week or two. I don't like it, but then it grows on me. The more I learn the intricacies of it, the more I like it and the, the faster it becomes for me to use. So... Could that just be a, it's so new uh, that, that you're kind of hesitant to, to to dig into it and maybe a week or two from now you may have a different opinion? No. I, I seriously don't like that. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Flat out. Let's no. face it. No. You don't you're never gonna please everyone. I don't like change. I don't. You're never going to please everyone with oh, it. And I got crap, you like, uh, like what Crap said. Uh, it does have a, it's kind of reminiscent of the Xbox 360 dash when they finally figured it out and it moved very fluidly. And that's the first thing I noticed was how quickly it, it, it was easier to navigate. Uh, I like the fact that, you know, they didn't mess with some of the things that worked. They just kind of placed them in a different spot. Like now the, the drop down menus kind of go horizontally across the top. And the high level of customization now uh, is going to be really, really cool as well. You know, uh, the fact that you can sort of pick what you really want to, uh, you know, stick yeah, in to your show. Main page sort of mm-hmm. thing. So you don't have to clutter things up with a lot of crap like you just don't really want to see it. Uh, that sort of stuff. So I like where they're going with it. I mean, I'm sure there'll still be some tweaks, but the only thing I want to say, and I think some people were saying it on Twitter, is that guys at Microsoft, figure out a dashboard that works and try to stick with it for a change because it's like every six months overhauling it is starting to get annoying. Uh, I don't care how you like how much you like it or how much you got used to it. Probably not even that, but like we've gone through too many iterations now. I mean, fuck the PlayStation's the opposite way at the end. Like they won't change anything. It's like the same <laughs> shit, left the right, left the right. Uh, you know, yeah, they just still got the same shit that's been on the go since the PSP era. I mean, come on. Um, but no, like uh, they just got to figure it. Out. I, I'm, I mean, I haven't used it, so I can't fully say. Like you know what I mean. But so far, what I've seen, I've I've liked it so far. So. So Whoa. I was watching the stream that Mike Ibarra had, and he was showing off all the little things here and there. So I thought it looked really cool. I'm not in the preview program or insider program anymore. But this kind of made me want to jump in back into it because I, I was interested in all the new things they were adding, especially the community section. That's completely revamped, and it looks way different than before. So and everything's big. Okay, so apparently she will just has a problem with big things. I yes, mean, hey, I, that's that's whoa, a you problem. Whoa, oh, that's a you I, I, problem. And she out the moochism. Damn. Yeah. Uh, oh. First off, no, hey, it's just they, I, can, they, they can make it smaller though. She will like they can. Yeah, that that's <laughs> something they, they can, can change but... definitely. I liked. I actually liked how the dashboard and the community and everything looked last time. I just don't understand. Like, I agree with Noof. Why keep changing it? And it's not even a small little change. Like, where you could just simply, like what me and Fox were saying, 
you know, change what's on the dashboard, change it, it around. It, it's yourself. evolving. No, it's literally like you have, they revamp the whole entire thing. Like first it was a sidebar. Now it's a top bar. Like make up your goddamn mind already. Hey, well, it's still on the they, side. It just looks it, different. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, here's it's the thing. It, 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 they're, they're making it so that it can have a uniform. That's going to be the uniform look across like a lot of their, their, their hardware. So like that's going to be on like their surfaces and stuff like that. So I, you know, um, it's not the final version, obviously. So hopefully they can, um, you know, like tweak it a bit. Leave your feedback if you're not happy with something because they do pay attention. <laughs> you know? I can't wait to see Shiro's feedback. Too big. It's, it's too, too big. big. It's too big. Everything. Too big. What are you doing? Blocks and stuff are like. <laughs> Blocks and stuff too big. When I literally, need to okay, slim them I down. have, I have the insider program. Like I literally was playing around with it on freaking Mixer this morning and. It's just, I don't know. I just, sit. I, just, Wait, I, I got it. I got it. Sit, sit further back, and then it won't be so big. And, I'm and on this. a 4K monitor. Everything <laughs> is already tiny. Like, See, th this whole thing here, the, all, all this, like, you know, it needs to change, it needs to be this, it needs to be that. This is why I'm not in the insider ring, because I don't want to get all these preview, uh, you know, programs and all that kind of stuff. I'll let all you guys sort it out, so that way when it comes to me, it's perfect. Oh, look at him. Smart boy. Well, I'm in it so I can bitch about it. Because <laughs> if I'm in it, then I actually have the right to bitch about it. And then, yes, I do actually send my feedback and everything else like that. So, I do. And I have... I will be telling them I don't like it. But... Don't too big. Lines. It's not... Okay, I, I understand you, you just, keep just, saying yeah, that one particular be like, you know, word, which is kind of getting a little annoying now. But it's not just the fact that it's too big. I said it's also like, I don't like the sidebar <laughs> and what they did with it. It's just... I don't know. I don't like what they do. Well, you could get used to it. I mean... I, Why I, I remember... do you have to have so many panels? Like like I said, you open up your freaking friends <laughs> list you can and you have to customize. Like, you can't customize your friends list. Like well, no, you, not your friends list, but I mean, you point. can customize your your social experience. It's not really, you know, the side. I don't like the fact that it freaking fifty billion. That they recommend something. friends. I'm I'm not a big fan right. of that. The, the recommended a friends thing, but other other than that, man, I'm I roll with the punches, man. I'm like, right. sure, Microsoft roll us out another one. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm just used <laughs> to it. That's what they do. They are a software first company, so they update stuff. People get really excited when their iPhones or their uh, Android phones get updates, right? The UI gets updated. They're yeah. like, oh my gosh, I love this new update. But then, like, I see a lot of Xbox fans just really not digging the Honestly, updates. But I look forward to it. I, I always look forward to the updates every single, like, um, winter or whenever to fall, whenever they do them on the 360 even. Like, you knew you were getting yeah. that big update. The first time I saw that next update, I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. You know, and, and I remember one, staying up all the way until like yeah. five in the morning to see that change. And I got the and then you get you get that you get that video that played at the beginning and where it was like Ooh, Yeah, was that like was awesome. Artist. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Yeah. Like, no, I'm with I you, Crappy. Yeah. I agree. I like exactly. change. See, I don't Fox like the same old freaking dashboard on the PlayStation. I well, really don't. Exactly. That that's the same fucking but dashboard that we had since change. the PSP. I, it's not that I'm hating on change. I liked the last dashboard. I liked how they had the la like the last setup on the Xbox. I just don't see why they had to make such a big change. Which, yes, I understand the whole concept of they are Microsoft. They update things. You know, my Samsung phone, every time it gets updated, it screws up something. So then I have to wait for another freaking update just for it to get fixed. So that kind of drives me up the freaking Oh my god, god it's not wall. just me. Every time my Samsung phone gets an update, my autocorrect on yes, the spell like my, check just gets so jacked up. My audio is like the worst. Like when I put headphones in, it's like they sound like they're underwater. I'm like, what the hell is this crap? And it always happens after a freaking update. It drives me crazy. Microsoft wants to fix anything. They should fix the two fucking buttons on the controller and put them back to start and select because nobody understands when you're playing the damn things. They like, press that picture looking fucking button. You know what? I always <laughs> press the wrong one too. Like, I always <laughs> press the wrong one. It's like, dude, the three lines one and I press the other one. I'm like, what the hell? So yeah, I'm oh, with my... you on that, Noob. Good one. Yeah, start and select. Five, Classic. No. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to jump to Foxy Deals. So, with Favorite that... part of the show. Let's run. Alrighty, take it away, Fox. 
Hey everyone, get ready to uh, spend some money on some awesome deals I'm going to share with you because I have the foxiest deals around. Um, so let's start with Xbox. And in Games with Gold this week, just came out today, uh, we have Xbox, not Xbox, we have Forza, <laughs> I'm tripping already. We have Forza Horizon 3, and there's three SKUs of that, so if you want a different, uh, I guess different ones that they have. Uh, okay, my words are all messed up today. So... The prices on the Forza Horizon 3 are 36, 44, and 50. If you want to pick that up, like they also have. Girlfriend. Just kidding. Oh, <laughs> just, oh just okay. <laughs> I'm just sorry. Go ahead. I'm going to mute myself. Y yeah, that's fine. I'm already messing up. I don't need any help. <laughs> All right. Uh, they also have Hitman. That's on sale as well. So that is uh, 24. And they have some DLC for that. Um, that's $2 and $4 for their DLC, and that's for the complete first season of Hitman if you're interested. And then we all have we also have another one, with, which is actually very shocking to me, that that's still on here. So Grand Theft Auto V is still 30 bucks, and that's an old-ass game. So yeah, that's on sale, I guess. Um, over on the PlayStation Plus uh, discounts area, we also have uh, Grand Theft Auto uh, 5, which is 30, but they also have different bundles with that as well. So they have like San Andreas, they have other games that you could get uh, for that. Uh, if you want the one that has um, the San Andreas along with it, that one's just 37, so that's not a bad deal. Uh, we have um, some DLC for one of their free games, which is Just Cause 3. So um, I think all the DLC for that is on sale. So check that out. And then we have Layers of Fear is uh, 7 bucks, So that's pretty good. Some online deals I found for you guys, which is a hard drive from WD Elements. It's a 1 terabyte external, um, what is it, 3.0 portable. And that is 45 at Best Buy. The next thing I found for you guys at Walmart is Street Fighter V. It's only seventeen, uh, forty. No, seventeen eighty-four. So check that out at Walmart. And uh, over on Amazon, we have Xbox One S, uh, five hundred gigabyte bundle, and that comes with a lot of great games. So if you want, uh, Recore, Forza Six, Halo Five, um, Ghost Recon Wildlands, all that, it's only two forty-five. Uh, and that's in Amazon again. And then the last one that I found for you guys, it's um, in Best Buy. And that is Kingdom Hearts HD uh, 2.8. For the PlayStation, which I wish this was on Xbox as well, but whatever. And that is 35 And if you have Gamers Club Unlocked, which is an amazing, uh, like, they're, they're another deal thing that they throw on top of the sale, uh, that is 28 which actually, with Gamers Club Unlocked, you do get a lot of better deals than over at GameStop with their um, power-up reward thing. So yeah, just wanted to let you guys know about that. But overall, those are the things that I found. Let me know if you guys find anything else yourself. Let me know on Twitter. Back to you, SheWolf. Awesome. All right. Well, I can't tell you if you're looking to get into the VR thing. I know right now, EB Games Canada has uh, $100 off the base unit, so that's not a bad way to start. It'll at least get you the helmet, then you just got to buy the rest. So 100 bucks is always better than nothing if you yeah, want to get into the VR. Join the Merchant Cap Revolution. No. Get, get VR. No. Hey, I no. saw she was <laughs> about VR. I'm just saying. I did. No. I there's so many like I have so many VR devs that have been following me on Twitter and I've been like I click and I like look at their games and stuff. I'm like, wow, that actually looked pretty cool. Now yeah. only if I had a VR. Then exactly. I get DMs. The funny part though is like I'll get DMs and they'll be like, Oh, so if you have a VR, I would love it if you could test my game. I'm like, I don't have a VR, are you gonna send me one of those first? Yeah. <laughs> like, well <laughs> doesn't help. Yeah. You should mooch one like mooch. Yeah, get an early birthday present like six months yeah. before your birthday. Yeah, I want an early birthday present like that. Fuck, man. My only Seriously, thing my mother got me was debt. I've never <laughs> gotten an early birthday present. Anyways, I, uh, Noof, did you see either. any questions in the chat that you want to read? <laughs> uh, just taking a look through, and I don't see... I've got uh, one from uh, DJ Arcade here. All right, read it off for us. All right, so DJ Arcade wants to know, with the new Xbox One X, are developers going to start making their games first and then port them to PS4? So I'm assuming he means, that are they going to make it for the Xbox One X first and then port it down to lower hardware? Mm, possibly. Usually it's... It, it, okay. It's a tough question. 
Because, oh, go ahead, She-Wolf. Well, it's just usually, like, if they're on PC, they usually do PC versions and then port down. So I right. I don't know exactly how that's, I would you assume know, so, but. I, I was going to say the same thing. Like, a lot of times developers, they, 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 they work on their games on PCs, and then they they refine it. They they go through all the uh, the the updates and everything to to get it to work on console. But you know, a lot of games like look at Batman: Arkham Knight. That game was a, a console game. They developed it on PC, but they they made it for console and then worked on porting it over to PC. And PC was by far the the best hardware that you could get when the Xbox One and the PS4 were out. You could still have a better PC, even if though you'd have to spend a lot of money for it. So that that game didn't do that well on PC. I, I think they 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 target consoles because they know that's where the majority of their sales are going to come from. Whether they're going to target the Xbox One X and then port down the PS4, I I don't know. I think that's going to depend on the the trends of of game sales overall. If if games are selling better on PS4, they're probably going to target that hardware. And then maybe add some incremental updates to the Xbox One X, uh, you know, get it to, to basically work best on that system. I, I don't know if they're going to target the Xbox One X until they see that games are selling better on that system. Here, here's the thing, right? Here, here's how basically how it's going to work. Most of these engines and these multi-plats are scalable anyway, so they're just easily scaling, scaling them. Uh, it's going to be That's going to be the difference. And then if they have any kind of 4K assets, the One X will get that, which will automatically make it better. Plus, the, the console is so powerful. Uh, that it's going to perform better no matter what. So it's made to not, like, with the PS4 Pro, which I have one, you have to switch on the boost mode, and then there's a handful of games that will will play better if you have that switched on. With the Xbox One X, all games, even your original Xbox, Xbox 360, uh, Xbox One, without a patch even, are all will all play better. There's not going to be the screen tearing. There's not going to be any of that nonsense. Um, so that's you got that right out of the gate. Then with the other games, anything that has 4K assets on a PC can easily just be patched into the Xbox One X version. It doesn't even take any work because if you look at the developer documents, which I've had, GKB has, it's super simple with how they're doing it there. And developers are really on board with this. Hence, over 100 games enhanced uh, and the thing's not even out yet. And then you look at the PS4 Pro enhanced, 59. So you can see that developers seem to really like the power of the Xbox One X. And I wouldn't foresee too many unless there's marketing deals quote unquote that are preventing it uh that, that, that that'll be an issue i think that a lot of developers are going to be in they want to showcase their games in the best possible light it's xbox one x right so you don't think they're going to target the 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 mass market when the xbox one x comes out and then it like well, maybe it add something to it. yeah it doesn't work that way like it used to like last gen was more like that like they would make a game on the xbox 360 kits and then scale it down like all this stuff is super scalable now uh, and it's 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 kind of similar, so I, I don't think it's really going to be an issue. Like it, it should be, it shouldn't be an issue because we've seen developers get games up and running in a couple hours on the Xbox One X. Right. So it should always have like the best version and the most, uh, you know, they, they should always put the most effort into that because it doesn't even require that much effort. Well, but I, I mean, now we, we've heard about devs taking just a couple hours to get their their Xbox One version of the game running on the Xbox One X at at a better resolution. But, uh, you know, do you think they're going to, like, we, we haven't heard what the other way around is going to be. If they develop targeting the Xbox One X hardware, how long does it tape, take them to, to get it to the Xbox One and the PS4? That That's something that, that's kind of been missing from that conversation. We don't know, is that going to work for them? Is that feasible? Is, is that a good way for them to approach game development? I, I personally, I think it is. I think they should target the best hardware first. But I, I, I don't know, is it more difficult to, to optimize a game to scale down, or is it easier to optimize a game to scale up to the Xbox One X hardware? Uh, they, it's just going to be... Uh, well, I don't think that you... It, it, it's just going to be easier to do. So I, I don't think that they're going to... Uh, you know, In the traditional sense, they would always go with the lowest common denominator, but they don't have to do that anymore. You know, Like yeah. I said, everything's super scalable. So I don't really think that's going to be a problem. Again, the only problems that we might see are the marketing deals. And hopefully those aren't going to be, you know, too too many. Like we see the caginess with Bungie, right? We see right. how they haven't really announced any kind of thing for with, with Call of Duty World War II on Xbox One X, right? So we see some of that, although we do know that Battlefront 2, even though that has a marketing deal with, with Sony, that's going to be enhanced, and they've already announced that. Right. 
but what exactly will how much will it be enhanced we don't know yet because they're really cagey on that so I don't well know. and my only thing is like with battlefront i think the frostbite engine like leads itself for being scaled to better hardware um and i mean i'm not trying to say you're wrong in any way whatsoever i'm just saying we don't know nobody's talked about targeting the xbox one x hardware and then downscaling it to the ps4 and the xbox one it's always been the other way around like we have this xbox one version of the game and we can just basically uh, up the fr uh, the the resolution to, to 4K from 900p or 1080p, and it takes a couple of hours, which that makes a lot of sense with that much hardware. Um, you know, it, again, I'm not trying to like you know start this whole debate here or anything like that, but we 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 honestly we we don't know how how easy is it for them to downscale versus upscaling from what they already have. Um, it, it's x86, so it's all very scalable. But, but my concern is more the, the, the textures. They're already developing it those for 4K for PC, so we know that's a very easy way to implement that and bring that in. But, but for games that, uh, that, that are basically developed strictly for the PS4, like the vanilla PS4 hardware, the, the Xbox One hardware, are they going to put in that extra effort for the Xbox One X? That, that's what I want to see from developers is that extra effort. Um, I, I don't know if they're going to take that. Like, like, look at a game like uh, now. This is just my own personal favorite, like Dark Souls Three. That game's been out for a while. That engine's been already out on the market. Are they going to go through and update that? And so far, they've been pretty, pretty chancy about whether or not they're going to to give us a 60 FPS mode. Are they going to give us a 4K mode? They, they may not do anything at all. Now, that's an older game. I'm not talking about like new, newer games, but like even stuff like that. If, if they use an older engine, oh, is that something that's going to be easy? And I, I think that's still up in the air. We really don't know what the answer for that's going to be. True. Interesting. It was a very uh, in-depth conversation that you two had going. She-Wolf is like, hardware. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, right. When it comes to hardware stuff, I, I mean, it, it, it can get very confusing, and, and we need developers to speak more about it, and that's the only way we're going to get a clear answer. That's, that's so, the easiest way to put it. Um, but I, I think it is very easy for somebody to make a game for the best hardware they have, the Xbox One X or the PS4 Pro, and then downscale it to the, to the base hardware. I don't think they'll have a problem with that. Um, they, it's just more of a, an issue of like like crap was saying. Is it going to be marketing deals? Is that what's going to hold them back? Is that is that going to be something that's going to stop them from giving us the best version that we can have because they don't want it to be better than the PS4 Pro version? Exactly, yep. exactly. All right, guys. Uh, so it's a forty. Um, I'm actually going to end the show here. Um, but before we do, uh, I just want to say thank you for everyone who has hung out and. Uh, had some fun chatting, uh, whether you're just kind of sitting back or whether you were actually, you know, hanging out in the chat itself. Uh, we do appreciate it. I'm going to let these guys go down the row and let you know what they're doing, um, where you can find them, and so on and so forth. Uh, so we'll start off with Noof. Well, guys, you know where to find me. Obviously, when I'm not on the console corner, I'm often found streaming some games. I recently did put up a video in uh, response to uh, Triple Cup Chuck and Video Game Challenge. You can go check that out on my channel. It's uh, kind of an in-depth look at a lot of the games that I have. Mind you, it's just physical games. I've got a ton of games as well digitally on my Xbox uh, One and on my PlayStation 4. So that's just a look at the physical collection. Let's get physical. And uh, <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's about it o overall guys go check out the channel like again make sure you subscribe and like everything that these fine people are doing you'll get the descriptions down below just want to say GKB we missed you today brother Brother, we hope that you get back on the next uh, episode and all that good stuff and make sure that you check out Mr. Crap Gamer and all his great stuff too guys I'm sure he'll give you the details in just a moment anyway want to say thanks for everybody hanging out it's awesome we need an outro just for his outro <laughs> <laughs> all right mike what about you hey uh well you can always find me here every tuesday on gamers knows best channel uh for the the console corner podcast uh other than that you can find me on twitter on uh mixer on xbox live magic mike 83 all across the board i try to keep it simple and that's magic with a k not a c oh you're stealing my thing i totally oh, stole my your thing Stole my thing. Just be thankful okay. we not pay this anymore. Like, good luck spelling that shit out. Oh, I know. Right? <laughs> I know. I know. I think it was Dealer. He was like, "Dude, you just gotta need to change your gamer tag. It, that doesn't yeah. work." Yeah. Dealer, really, Mister I I. All right. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. What about you, Fox? 
Um, well, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everybody in the chat for hanging out. Uh, sorry, I kind of messed up a little bit of Foxy Dio's. I am a little bummed out my new song didn't play, but it's okay. Maybe next it week. It didn't play? <laughs> no, it didn't. No. Wow, so, okay. Oh, but... <laughs> so, which, which is funny, because She Wolf was messing with the settings. She's like, yeah, yours plays good, but let me fix Mike's, because Mike's wasn't playing at first. <laughs> and now, reverse, we can only have one. Mike, I will fight there you to the death next week. But it's yes. kind of weird because <laughs> I will fight you. Played too. My money's on Fox. All right, so next week, hopefully, you guys hear the <laughs> new Foxy Dio song. So thank you to Scrotum again because he did both songs and uh, he's a pretty awesome guy. Um, but yeah, besides that, I'll be back on here next week, of course, hanging out with these nerds. And then my bro, GKB, miss you. And then, of course, if you missed Gaming Dead on Friday, we had an awesome first guest. So shout out to Luca for that. If you guys missed it, check it out. It's here on this same channel. And then obviously I do Foxy Deals on Twitter later. And I do my own thing on YouTube. And I got some uh, new things coming out on there. So hopefully you guys uh, check me out. Subscribe. And uh, yeah. Bye. Of course. And what about you, Crap? Uh, well, I got Xbox Nation tomorrow night at 8. Uh, Noof will be on there, uh, I think. Yes, uh, right, Noof? Yep, yes, there you go. So we'll I have... was on there last week. It was fun. Yeah, we had Foxy on there last week. We had a good time. It was, it was a lot of fun. So uh, other than that, you know, just go check out my channel. It's good stuff. Uh, at the underscore crap gamer on Twitter. Uh, send send your hate messages. I love it. Wow. Yeah, he talks <laughs> about rhinos. That's all he talks hey, about. Yeah, I do. I love I love rhinos, man. Yeah, and, uh, it's a lot knows of fun. what they sound like. I, well, now I do, <laughs> and they don't sound very manly at all. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't, strong and horny. What can you say? Oh, oh no my show. god! Oh my god! No, but they, yeah, the rhino they, horn is an aphrodisiac. <laughs> no, 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 nobody's taking the rhino horn. Trust Take me. Out now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I do. I do appreciate you sending me the link to hop in here. I was like, hey, you need any help? And then like thirty minutes later, she's like, oh, sure. I thirty wasn't minutes. Looking at Twitter, <laughs> like, wow. You kicked in the door anyway, so calm down. I did. I was like, I booted that door down. This is the second takeover I've had in a week. That's right, because I was on the next podcast. I jumped in there too and started take like, over. What I know about that, yeah. but okay. Well, you know, I, well, anytime crap gamer comes on, right? It's a it's a takeover. You know, crap uh, gamer comes no. in. Anyway, <laughs> man, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say so. I'm pretty sure we can hold our own against you, so I wouldn't really say it's a takeover. Wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, well, I mean, I, I came in here was 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 delivering some classic and classy content on Console Corner, like I always do. We appreciate you, Crappy. All Thank I did was you. say, all I did was you know, say that we can hold our own. This Nothing is the beginning of a Console Corner versus uh, Xbox Nation uh, uh, online battle. Possibly. Uh, all right. So, anyways, guys. <laughs> anyways, guys. Uh, I'm She Wolf. I was your host of tonight's episode, and hopefully, GKB will be back next week, as everyone has said. Did you just say no? Oh, hopefully. Huh? My bad. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was just, he walked by me just as I Tell said Tell him that. we said hi. All right. Everyone heard that. Uh, anyways, okay, so, uh, yeah, make sure you guys check us out on all the cool MP3 sites now where you can listen to the audio. And if you're listening on the audio sites like iTunes, Google Play, Stitch, and uh, a couple of other ones that we are on, which will be in the description below, uh, make sure you stop back at our YouTube channel and drop that like button because we really appreciate it. So, again, thank you everyone for watching, and I hope you guys have a great night. Bye. Peace out. Later. Later.